Hi, I'm Will. I'm Norm. Norm, today I'm going to teach you how to cook a steak. I know how to cook a steak. You use a pan, right? Well, you can or use a pan. Or an oven, right? But I'm gonna teach you how to cook it with a blowtorch, a cooler, and this guy right here. This is a vacuum wait, sealer. Wait, I get blowtorch because it makes things hot? Yeah, fire. But then you also said cooler. Now I use a cooler to keep my beverages cold. Well, a cooler is an insulator. So if you put ice in a bunch of beer and soft drinks and stuff like that in the cooler, it'll keep them cold. But uh, like a Zojirushi. It's like a Zojirushi. For me. Zojirushi. But if you put a bunch of hot water mm -hmm. and things that you want to keep hot or bring up to temperature inside the cooler, it will cook them as well. Ah, so it, this is sous vide. This is sous vide. It's a technique that's developed five or 10 years ago. Basically what you do is you put what you want to cook in a vacuum sealed bag, sink it in water that's the temperature that you want the meat to end up, mm -hmm. and then leave it there long enough for the heat to get all the way through the meat, warm it up to the, to the proper temperature, and then you put a sear on it using a skillet or a grill, or in this case, a blowtorch. So what's the advantage of doing this over using a traditional grill or a pan or oven? It's a good question, Norm. The basic benefit is that you control the temperature of the water bath really precisely. Mm -hmm. We're using a cooler, they make a bunch of expensive machines, but because you're you're not trying to heat up a piece of meat to 130 degrees on a 500 degree griddle right. uh, or, or grill or whatever, the temperature, the timing becomes less of an issue. So you can leave the steak in for an hour, two hours, three hours. The only thing that matters is you leave it in long enough for the heat to fully suffuse all the way through the meat and not so long that anaerobic bacteria start forming and you know you make botulism. So, so when I it. cook a piece of meat, typically I put it on the grill and then I check it occasionally every few minutes to make sure yeah. it's the perfect temperature and all the way in the middle. But exactly. this way you can just leave it in the cooler for an hour or two. So, so the benefit of this is that you'll get a perfectly medium rare piece of meat all the way through. Uh, and then when you take it out of the bag, you can sear it. So you get the Maillard reaction, which gives you that nice crispy burnt, you know, outside here. It gives you a little toothsomeness. Yep. Um, and, and the meat is perfectly cooked all the rest of the way through. There's no kind of medium, there's no gradation through, through the rest of the steak. So let's get started. All right. uh, it's pretty straightforward. The first thing we need to do is, I have a vacuum bagger here. Yeah, so um, this is the equipment you need. This is the equipment you, you need. need. Vacuum seal. The meat. Uh -huh. now, this is a typical uh, vacuum sealer to preserve meat. Preserve this is food. I think this is the Food Saver Mini. I've seen this on TV. Yeah, it's 30 bucks. It's a really inexpensive thing. It's also good for keeping, like, if you buy meat and it goes bad frequently before you can use it, you can bag stuff up in these guys and, and they'll last a lot longer, longer just in the fridge yeah. without even having to put them in the freezer. Awesome. Um, so let's scoot the steaks out of the way here. The way you make the bags with this, just follow the instructions for your vacuum sealer. But mine, uh, what it does is this area suck, it sucks air out of this area. And once it reaches a vacuum in here, then it fires up this guy right here, which is a little seals heating it. element yep. that seals it. Now there's a couple places you can mess this up. If you don't get a good seal and your bag leaks, that's really bad because you're gonna have a watery gray gross that's steak inside. Two hours in a bath, yeah. that's not good. It's gonna ruin the meat. Yeah. So I always do this a couple of times and even fold it over once just to make sure that I okay. get a really good seal. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. You just push down and you can hear it sucking. Okay, when the green light comes on, that means the heating, heating thing is going and you're probably clear. You just hit the button and it releases the lock and you can see there's a seal across the bag. I'm gonna do it a couple more times yep. just to be safe. Double seal that, triple seal it. Don't want to ruin my meat. The next thing we need to do is take our sealed bottom bags and drop in the steaks. Now so what steaks did you buy? I bought a couple of big New York strip steaks because that's what my favorite. Uh, the nice thing about the sous vide technique though is you don't necessarily need to use super expensive meat in order to, to have a good uh, process. Because you know, by leaving it in the heat for a long time, you break down a lot of the connective tissue. Yeah. And the longer you leave it up to 18 hours for something like short ribs, the better the, the outcome is gonna be. Now for something like short ribs where you're gonna wanna sous vide it for 18 hours, yeah. you're not gonna wanna use a cooler. No, a cooler would be probably too much coming back and forth and right. checking on it. Um, at that point you wanna buy, you can buy a standalone sous vide machine now for like four or $500. So uh, that's where I would go. Now I usually cut the end off the bag uh, just to make sure that there's no slack. I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, it's important to make sure you have the right bags with your with your vacuum sealer. Not all of them are appropriate for this. Uh, so you'll want ones that say, really specifically, this one you can see says, refrigerate, freeze, microwave, boil. That means it's safe for water baths over a long period of time. No chemicals. Uh, you don't wanna, don't wanna cause problems and like accidentally poison yourself. Now, this time I'm gonna put the bag into the gap. And you wanna get the edges of the bag into the gap uh, so what this is gonna do is suck all the air out of this bag, so it's just meat and bag. Just like humans. Let's give it a couple seconds just for good measure. And boom, a vacuum sealed New York strip steak. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. 
What's our water temperature out there, Norm? 130.5. You gotta get these in here. Yeah, so uh, when you're adding the steaks to the water, it's really important that the water temperature is at the, the end temperature that you want the right. steaks to go. You don't want to get too far above because what'll happen is you'll you'll like cook the outside of the meat, it'll turn gray and not look real good. Yeah, so we're gonna cook our meat, our steaks today at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The goal is medium rare. I'm, and I might have just made this you bag tried this, well. you tested this as low as 125 degrees. Yeah, I did a steak at 125 this weekend. I don't know that I would recommend that. It, it was a little bit too cool. Mm -hmm. It seems like medium rare is a better target for this technique yeah. than, than rare rare. Two steaks in the bags. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna open up the cooler. Would you grab the thermometer there? Uh, now, what I have measuring the temperature of the water inside the, the cooler is this guy right here. It's just a digital meat thermometer, and I'm just gonna drop these in. They'll sink around float? the bottom. No, because I took all the air out. Uh -huh. uh, I'm gonna add just a little bit more hot water to get us back up to 130. It's probably not a bad idea to have a kettle on the, on the stove. Keep on going. Because when you add the steaks, What's gonna happen is it's, they're gonna bring the temperature of the water down some. So you wanna let the water come back, come down and then go back up rather than start too high and come down. I'm gonna go up a little bit more. 131.4. That's probably enough. Okay, right. so let's shut the, shut the thing. So if you accidentally overshoot, yeah. then you can drop a couple ice cubes in. Um, one ice cube is good for about a degree with the amount of water I have here. And uh, the amount of water that you put in is gonna affect how stable the temperature is. More water is gonna be less, uh, more, more stable, stable. Yep. than less water. So you wanna put as much water as you can manage. A bigger cooler will help. Exactly. And then you have to boil more water. Well, the interesting thing is 130 degrees is what came out of my tap. So I was almost there when I was doing this at home. You were actually a little bit warmer. You were coming out at about 138. Mm -hmm. So I had to leave the lid off and let it cool down before I could put the steaks in. Nice. We'll be back in about an hour. Uh, that's the cook time on these usually. Right. Uh, a little bit more doesn't hurt. 45 minutes seems to be the bare minimum, and I think that's probably for a thin piece of meat. We're gonna, we have pretty big, thick, juicy steaks, so I'm gonna let it go for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. We'll be back in a little bit. Can't wait. So it's been about 75 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, the meat, as you can see, still in the thermometer, in the in the cooler. The yep. temperature's down to like 128 for the water, which is okay. We had to add a little bit of hot water in. Yeah. Yep, just keep it around 130. I mean, the thing that I found, and this is what the Modernist Cuisine guys recommended as well, check it 10 minutes in, because the meat's gonna bring the temperature of the water down. You just wanna add enough hot water to bring it back up. Yes. And try not to get it too far above where you want, or else you overcook the outside. You have to be consistent, because you, there's no way of checking the actual meat on the inside. Right, you can't put it, since it's in a vacuum bag, you can't just stick exactly. it with a thermometer or whatever. I'm gonna grab my trusty tongs here. If you'll move the thermometer and I'll lift the lid, let's bust out the bags. Now, one thing we noticed also was that Occasionally, the thermometer would rest on the meat, which was not as hot as the water around it. Yes. You wanted to get the thermometer in the water uh, to get the best sense of temperature. Okay. So my bags are wet. Oops. Now, if you look at this, you feel it. Feel that, Norm. Hmm. Feels very oh, tender yeah. and like perfectly cooked steak, right? But it's kind of an unpleasant gray pink color because uh, it's it, you know it looks medium rare, like the inside of a steak. So what I'm gonna do is cut you open these bags. technically eat the steak right now. You could eat it, it'd, it'd be, be just fine. fine. It'd be yeah. delicious. Um, it, would, it, it wouldn't be seasoned. It wouldn't be seasoned and mm -hmm. it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have the, the Maillard reaction, the crust that that makes is actually quite nice and yeah. is a good thing uh, when you're cooking meat. So I'm gonna open the first of these bags. Uh, and what we're gonna do is, no, we're not gonna even put it on the plate. We're gonna put it straight on this guy right here. Okay. So this is just a grill pan. Uh, it's, it's nothing fancy. Uh, I think it's a Blake Crusette, but I mean, you can get any kind of pan like that. We're not gonna heat the grill. Uh, what I've done here is I've mixed up some salt and pepper, so I'm gonna season the top and bottom lightly. You do both sides, of course. Now comes the fun part. Blowtorch. This is a propane plumber's torch. It's just a normal blowtorch like you would use to, to sweat pipes or something like that. Uh, you can get it at your Ace Hardware store. I think this one cost 20 bucks, and then the, the cable was an extra 10 or 15. Uh, the important thing to note is when you're using this kind of torch, it's liquid propane inside. So when you tilt it down, if you just use the top part, mm -hmm. you tilt it down, the liquid hits the nozzle, it pours out, makes a big flame, and it goes out. It's a big pain in the ass to yes. keep going. It's much, much easier if you use the end tip and just aim it like this. So I've, there's two valves with this hose. There's one right on the on the cylinder. There's one on the handle. Mm -hmm. I've opened up the one on the cylinder. I'm opening up the one on the handle. And you have to light it yourself with an yeah. electric match or anything like that. The trick with lighting this is to get it right up underneath uh, so that the whole thing lights all the way around at once. If you just have it partially lit, it'll go out in a second or two. So I've salted and peppered both sides of the meat. I put a little bit of butter on top here. I'm gonna light the torch. And the idea is just to run it right over the top real fast, get a little bit of a sear on, but not too much, and, and we should be good to go. There we go. See, that's, that's the flame that you want. And you don't have a whole lot of control over it with this kind of a fitting. You have either on or off, basically. So 
just kind of a gentle. So a lot of that's gonna be the pepper burning off the top, but you can see it starting to brown already. Now you can also use the blowtorch for other types of meats. Uh, yeah, so I, I used the blowtorch this weekend on a piece of uh, tuna with wonderful results. You can see the butter kind of cooking there on top. Um, so when you're looking at this kind of propane torch, the hottest part of the flame is this guy right here, where the, the top of that inside cone is. So that's where you want to kind of make sure it is on the meat all the time. You can cook the outside edges of the fat a little bit too, that won't hurt anything. So I think that side looks pretty good. I'm gonna reduce heat a little bit here. Flip it over, it's not even hot, and get the other side. Uh, you might wanna drop a little pat of butter on there, Norm. Maybe cut it into two halves. Yeah. This is gonna set off your smoke alarm, Norm. I did this outside when we did it before, for what it's worth. Melt that down. Let it, oh. Let's open doors. Smoke detect. Okay, and I'm gonna finish up by hitting the sides just a little bit. People get a little edgy when they see a uh, piece of meat with really pink sides, so you don't wanna have that. So with this kind of a propane torch, you turn it off and it just takes a second to burn down. And you wanna make sure you kill it on both the, the, this spout and this one over here too. Uh, and then beware of cold spots, of hot spots on the end. You don't wanna set this down on anything, but Norm Stone counter should be fine. So that is how you cook a steak in a cooler with a vacuum sealer and a blowtorch. Now you don't need the blowtorch necessarily. Well, you can do it in a skillet or any yeah. kind of ca cast iron on a grill. The yeah. idea is to expose it to high heat for the minimal amount of time yeah. so that it doesn't cook through the meat any. So I'm gonna cut into this guy right oh now. Oh my goodness, it looks so it tender. very tender. This is a terrible knife, so I'm kind of gouging up here. But you can see, perfectly medium rare all the way through except for a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of brown on the edge. I'm gonna cut some chunks off here so people can taste. I hope everybody likes their meat medium rare, or rare as this, I would probably say this is, but rare. This is a terrible knife, Norm. Are you, now you're gonna cut and then transfer the fork over? Uh, that's the civilized way to do this. Oh, I see. Grab a fork, grab a piece of meat. Oh yeah. Tender and delicious, look how tender it is. Mm. That's it. I shouldn't have taken such a huge bite. Uh, we'll be back later with more stuff. I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys later.